Hello everyone, I want to lead with a sincere thank you for helping this channel reach 75k in subs. At this level, I'm excited to be at the point where people sometimes recommend my videos on social media or forums, and I look forward to being to the next level of infamy, where people start confusing my work with better known content creators. Something like, this guy sounds just like so and so, only he talks too fast and his thumbnails are boring. To be honest, when I posted this submission video, I was expecting around 30 questions tops, but I ended up getting 90 questions, though some were duplicates. Thank you very much everyone who submitted something, I learned a little about myself with this self-reflection too. By the way, with the length of this video, it's almost like I'm in a panel at a convention and fielding open mic questions for over an hour, so to me, this is very cool. But not as cool as you guys. They say you should know your audience, but to this day I still have no idea why people listen to me or watch my content, much less like it and come back for more. What I do know and want to share are the top three things why you guys are an awesome audience. Number one, I like the stories you tell. Pretty often I get a comment sharing how this one game was a big influence on their life, or how nice it feels to soak in the nostalgia again. I find that fascinating and I love the good vibes. I also love hearing when someone revisits a game and now it makes more sense to them or they learned or saw something new. When I hear that I know I accomplished my mission. Then when someone shares how they discovered a game for the first time through a recap and then went and played that game on their own and now they love it, I feel so glad because now I help somebody find a new passion. Number two, you guys are willing to exchange ideas and perspectives. A lot of channels and forums are single topic, and while that encourages a tight knit community under one banner, it also results usually in majority rules, yes men, and echo chambers. What I see here are a lot of people exposed to a lot of different games, but many still willing to look at it, express their view, and not be dogpiled for doing so. Now, some sub communities are nicer than others, sure, but I like how many times people are seeing things for the first time in many years or ever and can compare it to other similar games, stories, or modern examples. It's this diversity that makes conversation interesting. Number three, you guys keep me honest. This is my channel, and I do what I want. But when I make a genuine mistake, the vast majority of you aren't nasty about it. You guys don't downvote bomb the stuff I make personally or games that are not as popular as others. I appreciate that. For the most part, you guys are pretty cool and respectful, and I only hope to do the same in return and continue to earn your time and patience. As a gesture of good faith, I will admit one mistake I have made in the past, and in my defense, defend it from a position of logic. In Final Fantasy VIII, it is Quistus, not Kistus, as verified by World of Final Fantasy. Is there something wrong, Quistus? Oh. Quistus? 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 I apologize for any misunderstanding I created. Anyway, thank you again for your support. Before we jump into questions, I'd like to plug that I stream on twitch.tv slash onlyblackmage and patrons on my Patreon get exclusive videos and vote on recaps monthly. Feel free to join my Discord if you want to say hi. Links for all of these in the description. Let's get started. Have you played Final Fantasy Dimensions? No, in fact I actually haven't played any of the mobile Final Fantasies. When it comes to mobile games, I only play a few and it's mostly the Nintendo ones. I'm semi-active on Pokemon Go and Pokemon Masters. I was big on Fire Emblem Heroes until I got my favorite unit to plus 10, then I wasn't too interested. I am somewhat active on Dragalia Lost. How would you recap the story for an open world narrative game where most side quests interweave with the main quest? So when it comes to determining what gets cut outside the main quest, it's a matter of impact and interest. If a side quest doesn't advance character development or support some plot point or explain a transition, it's probably not needed. An easy litmus test is take a quest or a scene and take it out entirely. Would you miss it anywhere, yes or no? Now, if a side quest did do something especially funny, cool, or for research purposes, I may give it a one-line mention. I love it when I cut something and someone shouts, hey, you forgot to mention this. I did not forget to mention whatever you just said, it just wasn't important enough to make the cut. Keep in mind, cuts also get harsher the closer we get to a one hour in runtime. What is your favorite Fire Emblem and why? Fire Emblem Awakening is my favorite Fire Emblem so far. They put everything on the line to make this one a success and knocked it out of the park. The sheer amount of main content, side content, and replayable content is so good. Quality of life made such a leap forward. The challenge is great at every level for a newcomer or veteran. I love the modernization of classes, skills, and the romance and child mechanics that they use from genealogy. They did so much right by me, and clearly others, because now every Fire Emblem after that really builds off the Awakening framework. Have you thought about doing character reviews with thoughts and ratings? So the closest I do to character analysis and review would be when I discuss characters in my Deep Cut series, a Patreon exclusive series that I post after its associated recapitation. I can pick favorites, but I'm not that interested in making devoted character focused videos. 
Main reason is because at that point we're stepping into lore territory and I refuse to become a lore channel. How much do you scrap out of a writing draft and how much time do you spend on a video? So when I'm script writing, I create a skeleton of plot points first, then fill in details and transitions to make the first draft. I usually cut at the very end, either for time or relevance during the final draft, so it's not a lot or that common because I often never wasted my time to begin with. So the time spent on a video varies wildly. Ballpark would be, take the average time to beat a game, double it, add a couple of hours for recording and editing audio, then add about 4 hours for every 10 minutes of video. Do you have any regrets on a video? If not, why not? Every video I have put out, I have put my best effort at the time into making, so I have no regrets. Have I made mistakes every now and then? Sure, but I own those, just like Quistus vs. Kistus. That's a part of the growing process. I do not regret the things I've done, just the things I did not do. Which video of yours is your favorite? At the moment, I think my favorite videos I've made are either Resident Evil 4, Chrono Trigger, or Final Fantasy XV because my favorite videos are the ones in which I show people or inform people something they may not have seen or learned before. A lot of people saw new stuff with Resident Evil 4 with its development history, Chrono Trigger with its endings, or Final Fantasy XV with its complete canon story. Teaching somebody something new is a joy. Also, no worries about doing more anime games, I feel with RPGs, anime is an inevitability. What's your favorite animal? Great question. My favorite animal is dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs. But if you want something more modern day, the red kangaroo. What other things have you done for a living throughout your life? So as far as work goes, my brief resume is, my first job was as a cashier in a dollar store to earn money for prom. After that, I paid my way through college working at a bank. Starting from the bottom as a teller, quickly rose, became a licensed banker, and was groomed to be an investment banker until the recession hit. My degree was in computer science and I was in a master's for IT. I was an ATM repair technician, a warehouse manager, then the head of a small IT department, an adjutant professor for college freshmen, a government contract worker doing stuff I can't talk about, and I was working at GameStop for almost all of last gen. I was a holiday hire just doing stuff on the side, and my first shift was preparation for the Xbox One and PS4 launch days. I quickly rose to store management and held multiple top performing stores up until the beginning of this year. I'll make this side note too, my stores were never the asshole ones you hear about online. We were the one of the few good ones that respected people and people respected us. But I can say the majority of my management colleagues were indeed those dicks or pushy car salesmen you hear about. When the environment became too toxic, that's when I left. Now I do work assisting families with COVID victims and make videos for you fellow adventurers. How long did you spend on Fate Stay Night? Each Fate video took about a month. Remember, the length of fate exceeds that of the Holy Bible, and it's just as dense with content. Editing visual novels isn't hard, it's just so long because you're reading a book, and there's no trick to speedrunning it like most games. Then editing it is dull because it's just walls of text with occasional pictures. I draw the line on visual novels, and it's the reason I only ever did one light novel recap ever. Have you thought about redoing your older videos, and why? So I do think about it, and I'm tempted every now and then, but I always return to the same position. I wouldn't totally remaster any of them because I can spend that time making new content, but there are a rare few where I would like to add some correction or clarification edits. But alas, YouTube will not allow you to replace a video once it's uploaded. What is your favorite Tri-Ace title, and in what areas do you think Final Fantasy VII Remake's gameplay falls short? So my favorite title Tri-Ace has worked on is Final Fantasy XIII 2. That game does so much so well that it's overlooked due to 13 bias. My favorite tri title, though, is Valkyrie Profile 2. I've spent so much time playing and loving that game. I'll be curious to see how it holds up when I recap it, I hope it still does. But as for the second part of your question, I made all my main points in my Final Fantasy VII Remake review, but the shortcomings are relatively small. There are tweaks I would make, but what they presented was overall very enjoyable to me. What is a game you believe to be underrated and deserving of more praise? So, I'm not a big fan of using the word underrated, because usually when a game, especially when it's good, doesn't get more acclaim, it's usually for a pretty logical, though sometimes unfortunate reason. It could be accessibility, it could be marketing, it could be target audience, and those are the same reasons a game could result in more popularity, ratings, or sales, even when it's debatably not a better product. Overrated and underrated are just safe outrage words. I also want to say that I don't think any game that sold over 1 million copies has the right to claim it's underrated. Selling over 1 million is still a huge deal that a very small fraction of games ever reach. Most games don't even reach 500k in sales, and people want to cry about being the poorest kid in the rich row. That being said, 
Some gems I want to shout out are Jet Force Gemini, We Love Katamari, and Eternal Sonata. Where does the name Oni Black Mage come from? Why did I start the channel? And what started Recapitation? I'm glad to see so many people want to hear the origin story. So, the name Oni Black Mage comes with a very cool story that I am saving for its own video. For now, I can tell you it's a title earned from an epic fight in Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition in which I won against 13 Valors and soloed a Valor God in a single encounter at an official Wizards of the Coast DM'd table. My first videos were uploads for collection of boss guides that I wanted to see good ones of but saw many bad ones online for. In other words, no one was making the kind of video I wanted to watch, so I made it myself with no experience, preparation, budget, and barely any equipment. I used to read my script in one take because I didn't know how to edit audio. The first recap video was the same. I wanted to, like many of you, explain to my good friend the story of Kingdom Hearts, yet all I see are just goofy Kingdom Hearts in 5 minutes that are glorified Wikipedia summaries, or Kingdom Hearts in a nutshell joke videos that just don't take anything seriously. I wanted a play-by-play, all-killer-no-filler, understandable synopsis so even someone who never played the game can feel caught up on it. So I made one myself. It wasn't called Recapitation, but it caught the attention of some folks on Reddit who liked it and then encouraged me to make more. The name Recapitation is a portmanteau pun combining recapitulation, the word most drive-by commenters think I am misspelling, and decapitation. That's why every video after the first Kingdom Hearts, I say, the story only gets large from here, so let's cut it down to size. You know, before OBM, my online handle uh, was my AOL slash Hotmail handle, which was Chaotic Phoenix. Just imagine, in another timeline, there is a Chaotic Phoenix making content. Probably a VTuber reviewing sandwiches or something. <laughs> Yeah, that would be ridiculous. What keeps me motivated to keep making recaps? So, all of my reasons are selfish. Originally, I only wanted to cover Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy, and Resident Evil, and that's it. That was the beginning and the end of it. But as for what keeps motivating me to make these, uh, it's the positive energy I get from people who either love the game I covered and got a huge nostalgia hit, people who learned something new, and people who discovered the game for the first time and are not fans, just like I mentioned before. There are many times these days where I'm experiencing a requested game for the first time myself too thanks to Recap, and it gives me an opportunity to not only meet more people in that community, but also break down a backlog of classics. Can you please do Final Fantasy XIV? Now, how can I deny the Prince of Badness? Still, sorry, I haven't budged on my stance of not playing any MMOs for recap. But, I have relaxed my stance on collaborations. <clears throat> Just stay tuned on that. What is your take on Wild Arms and Star Ocean Second Story? Well, I'll save any hot takes and reviews for deep cuts and digital hindsight, but you'll be getting a Wild Arms recap very soon from me. For now, I'll say what I like about both games are their settings. Wild West and Star Trek-like sci-fi are very underrepresented in video games, much less RPGs. It's also not like either dev studio isn't still making games, MediaVision and Trias are still making games even today. Unfortunately, both franchises are currently mobile games, and I really don't want them to die there. Have you considered doing MMORPGs or something similar, where different characters and quests weave into an overarching narrative like Final Fantasy XIV or Final Fantasy Star Online 2? So I have thought about doing MMOs, but I'm not going to. It's not that I dislike MMORPGs either. I've played World of Warcraft, Ragnarok Online, and Warhammer Online with friends. I technically played Elder Scrolls Online when it was in beta, and a wee bit of Final Fantasy XI when it first launched. When it comes to side quests, it's no different from non-MMOs, as some are for building lore, yeah, but most are just there for the grind. Sometimes you'll get that one that supports the actual main story. The more sandbox the game, the less focus on a core story it tends to have because the point of the game is about you having your own unique journey. What are my thoughts on balancing story and gameplay, such as a game with a great story but mediocre gameplay and vice versa? Hmm. So I feel like this can be an entire hour long discussion on its own. I also want to point out this is really two questions in one, because the first part is talking about the balance of story versus gameplay, while the example given examines the quality of said story and gameplay. I want you to keep in mind one important thing, and that is that games are a unique interactive medium. People can experience or be presented a story in music, books, movies, and so many mediums where they receive input but they don't provide any input. That is what makes games different, and its approaches to storytelling so interesting. 
Without that engagement, that gameplay, you really are just experiencing a glorified movie. So, gameplay is more crucial than story in a video game. Even in a visual novel or point-and-click adventure game where you're making choices and experiencing branching paths or consequences, gameplay still matters more. Now, for balance. The ideal is that you're going to be progressing the story at the same time as you're providing your gameplay. If you're experiencing gameplay and no story is happening at all, then odds are you're probably grinding filler content. If you're experiencing story and no gameplay, then you're probably in a cutscene. Neither extreme is taking advantage of the medium, just taking advantage of the player. Now for quality, of course the ideal is having both aspects be good or great, but don't forget gameplay is the priority. History shows that people will usually enjoy a game with garbage dialogue and story if the gameplay is good. The more fun they had engaging the game, the more likely they will sweep any lack of quality story under the rug. However, no amount of story will save a game that is janky, frustrating, or boring with its gameplay. Gameplay is the vehicle that delivers the player from one plot point to another, and if that vehicle is broken, there may as well not be a story. If I were to recap Trials of Mana, how would I do it? Also, what is your favorite Final Fantasy game, spin-off or main? I own the Trials of Mana remake, but I have yet to play it, so I'm not prepared to answer this question. I imagine the main story is the same regardless of who you pick for your party, but if each character has an important subplot to them that explains some part of the main quest, then worst case, I edit in every character simultaneously as if the journey just included all of them. Not sure if that is possible. It could be a Saga or Octopath dilemma. As for Final Fantasy, my favorite mainline game is Final Fantasy VI, and my favorite spin-off title is Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Because even though Tactics has a much stronger story, Tactics Advance has much better balancing and gameplay, while still having a nice story. Grand Theft Auto Recap win. Oh, it's in the queue for sure. Say what you will about the franchise, but the Grand Theft Auto series, starting from 3, has really dramatic and pretty compelling stories that should not be skipped. Uh, just throwing it out there, my personal favorite GTA is 5. Have you ever thought of having a guest speaker, and which series have you had the most fun recapping the story of? So, true story, twice I have offered a guest to narrate a recap, one for the video and another for the intro, and both times I was politely declined. Uh, most fun series I've recapped, even though I haven't recapped all of them, is Bayonetta 2. Both Bayonetta games are so good, I really look forward to 3. Bayonetta 2 is top 3 best stylized combat games ever made in my book. Better than Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition, yeah I said it, but nothing beats God Hand. Is there a mechanic in RPGs that you absolutely can't stand? I would have to say that crafting that is tied to RNG drops, I hate. Crafting systems are already very hit or miss to me. Some games, like you know, the best gear is crafted, not found, and in some games the only things you can craft is just garbage that's obsolete very quickly. I don't mind the concept of crafting gear, but when you clearly tie it to get 80 of this trash and then get 3 of this junk, and then the fewer quantity one has like a 2% drop rate on a rare enemy spawn, and there's no way to better obtain it, <sighs> my blood pressure just rises. You're basically telling me, hi, I want to actually waste hours of your life and call it content. Would you also like some piss that I call rain? <sighs> well, I recap the Xenoblade series. Yes, it's in the queue. The queue, by the way, you can check on my Discord for all of the upcoming and potential recap titles. What video did you enjoy making most so far, and what is your favorite video game? Every year, I always look forward to making the April Fool's Day video. Every year, I love to make fun of people's rigid expectations in a serious manner. Speaking of, not to make light of your question, but I don't have a singular favorite video game. But I do have favorite games in different series. I will say my favorite video game series is The Legend of Zelda. Near Automata win. Yes, I'm an Automata versus Automata man until corrected by an official source. We'll see. I'll double check before I record. And yes, it's on the queue and pretty high, honestly. The Near Replicant remaster is coming out soon in spring, so I'll probably definitely have it up before then. What is the process for choosing a game to be recapped? That process has evolved over the years, so it used to be whatever I wanted, which was mainly Kingdom Hearts Resident Evil and mainline Final Fantasy. Then I was commissioned to recap Danganronpa, and ended up loving that series, and since then, I started being more open to requests in general. These days, it's mostly a mix of what is most frequently shouted or upvoted in the comments of the latest video, and every month the patrons on Patreon get a poll to pick one title of their own. Recently, 
I now face over 20 open series, which is getting out of hand, and some series just don't get an update for at least a year, which is not cool. So now I focus on recaps for existing series before I open up new series or one-off standalone titles. Did you choose a thug life or did the thug life choose you? Look, I never asked for this. All I'm trying to do is survive and make good out of the dirty, nasty, unbelievable lifestyle that they gave me. What's one game you've always wanted to play but can never get around to playing it? Super Mario RPG. How long does it take you to collect footage for each video? I also appreciate your one second cut gags. Kenta, let me tell you something. I appreciate you. In every single recap video, there is either a quick visual gag, a pun, an inside joke, or reference to something outside the video, or conspicuous alliteration. I love it when people like you catch it and point it out in the comments. It brings a smile to my face to think, high five, this guy gets it. I wonder if someday someone will actually find all of the easter eggs I put. Like I said, there's at least one in every single video I've ever made. As for footage collection, it's however long it takes to play the game. To speed things up, I always have a guide to follow, and I look up speedrunner notes beforehand on tips or exploits. Are you going to recap more Trails games? Yes, they are in the queue. Those are some long games though, I'm going to tell you. What is your favorite genre of music? What is your favorite genre of movie? Have you ever preferred a non-canon ending to a game with multiple endings? When it comes to music, I love rock, metal, most electronic music, especially synth, and almost all orchestra, from classic symphony to epic orchestra. Every now and then I also enjoy hip-hop or pop music. I also pretty much love every song ever used for an internet meme. When it comes to movies, my favorite genre is easily horror movies, but more so monster movies or psychological horror ones. I'm not a big fan of slasher or jump scare horror. Finally, it's rare, but I sometimes do prefer the non-canon ending. Two examples I can pull off the top of my head uh, recently was Parasite Eve, as I thought the extra non-canon ending was so much more interesting, so much so that I had to make a big mention of it in the video. Chrono Trigger is another one, as though there are over a dozen endings, I like the festival ending one where they chase his mom and time in the most, though the final ending I ended the video on, the one with the DS linking it to Chrono Cross and the anime ending that was taken for the PS version, that is technically the more canon ending. That's the way I got away with it in the video. I posted my personal preference ending first, and then the canon ending last and everything else in between. How would I handle a game that is retconned later within its own franchise? So I've actually come across this dilemma before, with a couple of series like Xenosaga, Resident Evil, or the Final Fantasy VII subseries. Good lord, the amount of retcons in that subseries. First, if the game was ever re-released, and the newer version includes those retcons, I'm more likely to use the more modern version of the story. Otherwise, I really prefer to use the original game that people fell in love with, and tell the story within the context of that game. You see, my job is to tell you the events that happened in that game, not speculate or add notation of events that happened outside of that game. Will I recap more Shin Megami Tensei and Persona games, also Digital Devil Story? Yes, though not necessarily in that order. I actually want to have more Mega Ten mainline games done by the time Nocturne gets remastered in the spring. What is your favorite Final Fantasy game and why? So I said before Final Fantasy VI is my favorite, I don't know what I can say that hasn't already been said over the past 25 years, but I will add this, when it comes to art aesthetics, writing that enables every non-extra character to stand out as a main character, diversity in gameplay options, musical theming, this game is still relevant, but most of all, that's, I just love its impact and its legacy. So many of these elements are not only excellent for the game itself, but its impact on its own series is still felt today, and some elements beyond the series. Take the iconic sprite art design of Final Fantasy VI. It's not only used in several Final Fantasy titles still, including 15, but so many RPGs since and still today, especially 32-bit indie games, either try to emulate its character sprite design and environment aesthetics or link to the past. It's one of those two. Those are the two main inspirations that everyone pulls from. There's a reason for that. Also, its own Esper system paved the way for tossing out traditional classes in favor of equipable means of ability gains and stat progression. Almost all the Final Fantasy mainlines follow that from that point on. And then once six did desperation attacks, then so many of the mainline games afterwards had to have a version of it, calling it either limit breaks or overdrives or whatever. And then ever since six started it, the final boss has to have a multi-themed, multi-part epic boss theme. It's also just such an efficient game. I love that. There's just almost no systems that serve no purpose or burden the player. I love it. I could honestly gush about everything I love about that game for over an hour, but... 
You've heard it from everywhere else. All the good reasons everyone mentions, I agree with them. So I'll just move on. Will you recap you know? No promises. I gotta take a look closer at that, but I'll at least add it to the queue for now. Can you explain the Fire Emblem series? Yes, I can. It's a popular strategy RPG series that has about 16 games so far in the main line. Three of those games are actually remakes of the first three games, so you could argue there are really 13 games, half of which were released in America. Now, if you want me to recap it, no worries there. It's definitely on the queue. I have plans for that series. What microphone do you use? I've gone through a few over the years, but the one I've been using for the last few years is the Blue Yeti. How much have you paid in playing all of the games for this series? <laughs> I can't calculate how much I've paid in time, health, and wealth over the years to continue to breathe life into the project. It continues to be my burden. What's your favorite pinata from Viva Pinata? Catnip? You get a high five for a cool question and a deep cut. For those of you who don't know, Viva Pinata is a game I unexpectedly fell in love with, and it's one of the first videos I also ever uploaded. Favorite is a little tough to pick, but if I had to settle, I really like the Chinicorn and the Dragon Ash. Those guys are always permanent residents in my garden. What are your top three favorite RPG games? And what are your top three favorite RPG characters? Hmm, so I don't have a strict favorites list, but you know, Three I know I could easily say are contenders at any given time, no particular order. Uh, Witcher 3, Chrono Trigger, and Pokemon Gold and Silver. Top 3 RPG favorite characters? Uh, that's a bit difficult for me. So I'm just going to cop out and give you my favorite characters from three different series. So my favorite Tales of character is Yuri from Tales of Asperia. My favorite Final Fantasy character is Min Wu from Final Fantasy 2, and I know none of you ever would have guessed that. Most of you are like, who the hell was that guy? Ooh, man, Min Wu. I need to make a video on why Min Wu is one of my favorite badasses in the series. My favorite character from Fire Emblem is Nephany from Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Love that girl. Force of nature. What was your favorite series to cover? Ben, you have good taste, because Resident Evil is also the series I would consider my favorite one to have covered so far. I enjoyed making every single video. I'm also one of those that likes all of the Resident Evil games, even the spin-offs. And I enjoyed pointing out every single helicopter pilot death. Do you have a game or series you refuse to recap? Yes. All sandbox games like Elder Scrolls, emergent narratives like Mass Effect, or environmental storytelling like Dark Souls. See, reason being, sandbox and emergent narratives are just way too personalized and they do not commit to a default canon path. They're all about you making your own story instead of having one explicitly told to you. You don't play those games with the main story usually either, it's all about your own personal journey. Environmental stories refuse to have traditional exposition, or in most cases, even confirm the speculated stories and plot holes that you're filling in from gathering information from the game or lore. I'm here to tell a story, not spit theories. I like playing those games, but I refuse to recap them. Have you ever pushed yourself to finish a game whose gameplay you greatly disliked just to see the story? Prideful one, that is the story of my life. You see, I've almost never quit a game. Unless the game is literally unplayable by me, I will push forward and finish it, even if I'm absolutely miserable while doing so. First, Mama didn't raise no quitter, and second, there are so many times a game ends up a lot better than how it began, and I want to see that. When I give a review, even casually, it's usually not an impression like how most people who just tried the game, I actually beat it. I also love invalidating the number one counter of anyone I offend by saying I didn't like a game, which is, oh well you never finished the game so your opinion is just worth less. Ha, take that. I played that game, I finished it, and I still didn't like it. Also it may surprise you that there are some games I recapped that I just despise. Or was it just such a joyless chore to finish that others consider classics? But you would never know because I never inject my personal opinion or attitude about a game in any recap. I save all that salt for the Deep Cut series. Will you recap the Pokemon games? Also, what is your favorite Pokemon and Pokemon game? Yes, I definitely will, and it's on the queue. My favorite Pokemon is Sandslash. Not Alolan Sandslash, though he's cool too, no pun intended. OG Kanto Sandslash. Every game where Sandslash exists, I will catch it and name it Tomado. For the games, I've played all the mainline series and almost all the spin-offs. My favorite mainline game is Pokemon Gold and Silver, and my favorite spin-off game is the Pokemon TCG game that they made for Game Boy. Close second will be Pokemon Coliseum. How about the Tekken series? 
So I don't know enough about the games to know if there is a centralized canon campaign or if it's a bunch of individual fighter stories that link together. See, Tekken is a series that I've tried a few installments and just never got into. Speaking on that note, except for Soul Calibur, I really just don't prefer 3D fighters. No disrespect to them, they're just not my cup of tea. I prefer 2D fighters and mostly got into Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Guilty Gear, Smash Bros, Blaze Blue, uh, recently Dragon Ball Fighters, and a few others. Have you ever considered recapping anime? I have not considered recapping anime because even though I watch a lot of anime, I have zero interest in making recap videos on them. I will note that last story is on the queue. Will you recap more Suikoden? Have you thought about covering God of War? So first, yes, you will get more Suikoden. As for God of War, I've played the mainline series, I didn't play the portable titles, I liked the first game, I love the 2018 Dad of Boy, but I think 2 and 3 are terrible. If I recap them, I just want to do the first and fourth mainline ones regardless of what anyone else says. Do you have a personally enjoyed series or single game that you have not done yet? Yes, The Legend of Zelda. Ever since Nintendo lifted their YouTube red tape, I cannot wait to clear out some of these open series and just have a professional excuse to replay the entire series again. If you could do it all over again, what would you do differently? Ah, what a nice wish. Hmm. Well, if I could give my past self some advice that I would actually take, I would tell myself three things. One, learn to edit audio. Two, do a little bit every day. And three, do not pursue lost love. Do you feel like this channel has positively or negatively bled into other aspects of your life? Short answer, yes. On one hand, I have acquired new skill sets, met a whole host of new people, uh, practiced stepping outside my comfort zone, combined personal passions with creative freedom, improved my mental fortitude, uh, refined my written and oral communication skills, and caught up on games at a faster pace than normal. On the other hand, this continues to be a huge burden on my work-life balance, as it consumes so much time, energy, and mental stress, and it's basically a second job, only you get paid way less and you don't get benefits. I've sacrificed years of personal time, social life, and activities, and sleep to continue just making content. Even most games I consume now are just done in such a rapid way versus being casually savored. One good thing is that I'm committed to being just a content creator and not an influencer, because if that was the case, I would likely be stressing out more about brand managing, sponsorship hoops, metrics, collaborations and exposure and all that. I turn all that stuff away weekly and mind my own business. I'm fully aware I would grow faster chasing the influencer life, but I don't care about it and it's my choice. How do you balance personal life and the channel? Is the channel your main source of income? I balance my personal life and the channel very poorly. I feel <laughs> I'm a bad workaholic. The channel is also not my main source of income, but the dream that I get closer to is one day it will be. All those games you mentioned are on the queue too, thanks for suggesting them, and hey, shout out to Ark the Lead. What's the most confusing game you've had to explain? I think that crown is still being worn by Zero Time Dilemma. Having to unravel a fourth dimensional time web and tell it in a linear fashion was a constant series of double checking and tracing maps. The annotations I posted in the video to help keep track of where you are fourth dimensionally are the same notes I used. I'll also apologize here to anyone who noticed I did not add Gab the dog's name to those who died when he was killed in his timeline. That was just an unfortunate insight. What are your top three favorite JRPGs? So not to repeat myself, I'll pick my favorite installments from three more Japanese RPG series. My favorite Tales of game is Tales of Vesperia. My favorite Persona game is Persona 5, and FYI, I have played all six Persona games. My favorite Kingdom Hearts game is Kingdom Hearts 2. Which series have you done that you are the most proud of? Uh, I cannot really explain why exactly, but I have this sense of pride for recapping Fate Stay Night. Not just for its size and scope, but the way the script came together and how I edited it to look hopefully as interesting as it can be for words and pictures. Tooting my own horn here, but I legit think I have the best story synopsis video for the complete Fate Stay Night game on the internet. Room for improvement, sure, but I'm proud of the work I did. What nationality slash ethnicity are you? Is English your first language? How old are you? Thank you for your kind words, though I think I have a ways to go before my voice has that level of recognizability. I'll be happy to even get half as recognizable as, say, Brandon Jones, currently Easy Allies and formerly Game Trailer's voice guy. Now, I was born in Queens, New York. Couldn't you tell by my distinct New York accent? I know, I really don't have that much of the stereotypical one. As for ethnicity, I am very mixed and represent at least 10 countries across the world. I'll share my parents and grandparents and keep it short. So, 
Puerto Rican, Trinidadian, Indian, Spanish, like actually from Spain, and actually from Africa African. Me? American. American English is indeed my first language. And at the time of recording this video, I am 34. Do you play the game you recap every time? With the exception of one time so far, yes, I have played every game I recapped. The only exception so far is Final Fantasy VII Before Crisis, because that game doesn't exist anymore. I recapped the only English playthrough available on the internet. Do you like memes? Will you recap Tales of Destiny, Wild Arms, or Grandia? Yes, they are all part of the queue. Wild Arms is coming out next, as a matter of fact. I like to sneak Tales of games in as early as I can. You have a job, yay, so do most of us. Some RPGs take 60 to 200 hours to finish. Would you consider using volunteer recordings for things you would normally not play? Well, Greg, I do have work, but I wouldn't call it a regular job. Though, I am glad most of you are still employed during these tough times. Now, fortunately, most RPGs, if you just go through the main campaign and follow a guide and look up tips beforehand, are actually closer to 20 to 30 hours, so it's not so bad. That being said, I already do leverage playthrough footage of things I cannot, will not, or do not do. For example, Bravely Default, even though I played that game on my own and even made a guide for it, I did not own a 3DS capture device, so I used footage of another person's playthrough for the entire video. For Tales of Exilia, I did do one campaign, but I needed footage of the second parallel campaign. Very often in many videos, there are out of the way side quests that I do want to talk about or side bosses or extra events I want to mention. Rather than grind or go out of the way for those, I just get the footage from elsewhere. I credit all sources in the video, and I do have a few go-to people I pull from. Also, if I ever recap Final Fantasy XIV, I would probably collaborate with someone to collect the footage for me. I remember there were recaps for Four Heroes of Light and maybe Chrono Trigger, where these were moved due to copyright or some other issue and can you reproduce them. So good news, Chrono Trigger has never been flagged or taken down, and it's still in its own playlist with Radical Dreamers and Chrono Cross. I also have not done Four Heroes of Light yet, so there is nothing missing. So far the only video to have ever been taken down by YouTube was Final Fantasy IX, and sort of bravely default class guide, wherein they kinda muted portions of it. Since I was not satisfied with how the original 9 video turned out, even though it had 250k views, I was glad to take the opportunity to upload an updated, better version. Just in case you ever wondered, why does Final Fantasy IX have so fewer views than its neighbors? For Bravely Default, I posted a link to the original audio for folks to play alongside the video. It's not the best solution, but it was the fastest. If you could choose an updated title slash sequel, what would it be? Sequel I would love to be made is Prey 2, and I don't mean the 2017 reboot, great as that was, I want the original Prey 2 that was cancelled during development and was looking to be such a badass galactic bounty hunter game. I like to think that Starfield will be that spiritual sequel, but we'll see. If I could get a modern remaster with the works, I would pick Diddy Kong Racing and have it retake the crown as the best kart racing game. Will you recap Breath of Fire 2 and 3? Yes, and thank you for not forgetting it. Breath of Fire is one of those series I am playing for the first time myself through Recap, and I gotta say, that we've only played 1 and 4, they hold up, and are fun games. Is there any game you're putting off because the plot is too confusing? Nope. Working past complexities and trying to make them more understandable is just part of the job. So far I haven't faced a game that's truly confuddled me, not that I'm asking for challengers. So about the process, do you take notes as you play through games, do you reference other sources, do you play through a game before a video, or is it more from memory? No recap is ever from memory. Everything is sourced from the game itself. So if you ever want a live example of the recap process, watch my Last of Us 2 playthrough on my stream dump channel, OBM Plays. During it, I was recapping the game while playing through it for the first time in front of a live audience. And basically, you play the game like normal, and when you reach a bit of story, you write down briefly what happened. Sometimes you can raise notes or questions for transitions, and often I note anything funny or interesting that happens along the way. I basically draft a skeleton first while playing. Then afterwards, I will review all the footage again and write the first draft of the script, filling in all the details, fleshing out the plot points, and connecting them together. I do research on every game I recap, as sometimes there is something of interest during the development process that's worth mentioning, or there are different versions to take note of. If a game has media outside of itself, I usually don't reference it, as it's usually not canon or relevant. I especially do not make the mistake of putting theories in my video as if they were facts. Not every game is Final Fantasy XV, wherein the movie, DLC, and anime were made alongside the game and actually meant to be consumed together. 
Give us your thoughts on Linkle and how Nintendo should make her a canon character to The Legend of Zelda. Ooh, I love this question, Brad. So, for those of you who do not know, Linkle is a side character made for the spin-off Legend of Zelda Musou game Hyrule Warriors. Her premise plays off the fact that she is the spirit of hero reborn in different ages and always to somebody named Link, but they never said the spirit couldn't be reborn into a girl. With that, we have Linkle, who believes she is the spirit of the hero reborn and does actually have unique powers. So I love this character. I love her concept, I love the story potential, I love how she's one of the top tier characters in the game. She's basically John Wick of Zelda with her twin crossbows and martial arts. It's a massive shame that the game isn't canon. But, I feel Nintendo has an opportunity with Hyrule Warriors 2, which is a canon game and prequel to Breath of the Wild. So I have two ideas. They're probably not going to be either one. But, this is my dream. Make a paralogue chapter about her living during the Calamity, and being one of those who fought and fell during the Siege of Hyrule Castle. It would be tragic, but it would work. Option 2. Link's spirit leaves him during his hundred years rest, and is safeguarded by Linkle as she has her own adventure to try and return it to him in time for the beginning of Breath of the Wild. It's kind of Kingdom Heartsy, but I like her as sort of the missing champion. But hey, you know, I can dream, and until then, I will continue to support Linkle. What are your most loved Zelda games? I love the sudden Zelda questions. I could talk about the Zelda series all day, I really could. And Alex, I really like how you phrased this question, what are my most loved games? Not which one of the best, or my favorite, because those are subtly different answers. And the games is plural, because you know, with this series, it's hard to choose just one. So, the games I love the most in this series would be Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, followed by Zelda 2 and the Oracle Pair. They are all so good for different reasons, but everybody knows that. Keep in mind, if you were to ask me what I thought the most significant Zelda games were, or the best ones, my choice would be different and the discussion would go in a different direction. Yep, cannot wait to get to the Zelda series. Have you played Legend of Mana or the Saga Frontier series and will you recap them? So I have not played the Legend of Mana, but I do own but have not played the Saga Frontier games. But don't worry, both are on the queue to be recapped. How do you feel about having parts of the Danganronpa story told only in anime? So in case you didn't know, excluding V3, the rest of the Danganronpa series, the Hope's Peak Saga, was concluded with an anime, half of which was also a prequel to the games, showing the fall of Hope's Peak Academy. So you'll want to watch it after playing all of the other games besides V3. So I liked the anime, but given how they aired it, that's a format that does lend itself better to the visual media versus game format. Watching the fall is also the most interesting way to present it, otherwise they probably would have made it a light novel. Also, the killing game part wasn't really done in a manner that matched the trial and investigation format of the games, so I'm kind of okay with them making it where it was an anime. Since the anime is easily accessible and completely canon, it's an unusual choice, but I'm glad the storyline got an ending at all. Or did it? What is your favorite battle system in RPGs and why? Also, can you recap Shadow Hearts? Yes, in fact, Shadow Hearts is winning the current poll for the featured title in October, so we'll see how that shakes out. As for my favorite battle system, in general, it's hard to really nail it down, but I prefer skill-based RPGs over brute force ones. Uh, lazy battle systems are the ones where you can just spam the strongest spell or attack that you have over and over until something dies, and that just gets you through the entire game. No strategy, brain dead, a dog can play it. There's just no depth of combat, such as considering consequences for the next move. Managing tighter resources, adapting to an enemy strategy, positioning, class matchups, or maybe being punished for sloppiness. I like it when the combat system grows you as a player, and the person and strategies you use in the beginning of the game are not the same as the end of the game. That's why I prefer combat systems like Tales of or Fire Emblem for this exact reason. Also, the combat loop of Final Fantasy XIII 2 is among the series' most creative and interesting, whereas most of the Final Fantasy series, you can just brute force your way through the whole game. The preparation and execution of Witcher combat is deliberate and planned, that helps you immerse you into the role of being a professional hunter, otherwise you just get wrecked. Also, exploiting type matchups with very limited resources and tactical demon fusions, that makes or breaks you in most Mega Ten combat. It's all so good, I love it, I love it when you're using your head. When will you recap the Dragon Quest series? Would it be too much to recap some book series? Dragon Quest is on the queue, and it will be bumped up once some series are taken off the queue. As for recapping books, I'll just be very clear, I have zero interest in it. What led to you talking about games? What is your criteria when it comes to picking a game? 
So I've been talking and playing games since I was a little kid. My dad had a Commodore 64 that I barely understood, but one day he won an NES system and a few games from a supermarket raffle, and the rest has been history. As for how I pick my games for recaps, I encourage you to watch my Digital Hindsight number 9 video entitled, How I Pick Recaps. Will you recap Radiant Historia? Sure, it's on the queue. What's one more game where problems are fixed by time travel? You know, it's actually a surprisingly common solution. As a fellow YouTuber, how did you get here? Hmm, so to add context to my answer, I don't know your ambition or reasons for creating, but for me, I'm a content creator, not an influencer. So if you want to go as an influencer, then do whatever YouTube Academy suggests, they love that stuff. I'm a guy who grew to this point doing this project part-time, outside school and work, but hey, here's my advice. First, number one, learn to edit and improve your audio quality. I cannot emphasize that enough. So many good tutorials for working with free software and tools. Invest in yourself and educate yourself. Two, do a little bit every day. It doesn't matter if you put in 30 minutes or three hours of work into production. Just don't put it off and get used to working on the next thing daily. That way, when your motivation is shot and you just don't want to work on anything that day, you can't put off your progress as easily as if you're used to just doing work whenever you feel like it. I do most of my work when I don't feel like it. Also, you turn mountains into molehills when you chip away at something consistently rather than long burnout bursts, and your brain will thank you for it too. Number three, stay excited for every milestone. I was excited to hit 10 subs starting out, and I was just as excited to hit 100 views on a video, and just as excited to hit 100 subs, and then 1000 views, and so on. Happiness is an attitude only you control, and no one is going to always be around to cheer for you and lift you when the going gets tough and the comments get mean. 4. If you have targeted content, then put your content in front of that audience. Say you make videos about skateboarding. Go out and find relevant skateboarding forums, discords, subreddits, Instagram, where it's okay to promote yourself, and put your stuff there. People aren't coming to you yet, so you just need to go where your people are. And then 5. Just make something. Make 20 videos of your best effort first before you consider giving up. Your first video will suck, but your 10th video will be better, and so will your 20th video, but you gotta make those first 19. Also, never make a blog post apologizing for not updating or some other nonsense. Obviously you haven't made anything for 3 months, nobody cares about your reasons why. You can make excuses or you can make videos, but never make videos about making excuses. Stay focused look forward, and let your work speak for itself. You can do this. Are you planning on doing any more Fate-related recaps? For Fate, I am sticking to the games, and visual novels. Not the animes, movies, manga, or light novels. I am thinking about Fate Hollow Ataraxia, and I need to look closer at the Fate Extra series to see if they have a centralized canon campaign. And that's it for questions. You know, these are always fun, at least I had fun, and a big thank you to anyone who stayed till the end. Well, back to work. Final Fantasy XIV isn't going to recap itself. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and thank you for sharing. I'll see you on the next Battlefield.